my name is Matthias. I'm a pre-sales engineer at AWZ MDT. And today I want to show you four features and three user stories in a live demo using Octoplant that will make you sleep well at night. So our customers come from all sectors in which automated production plays a part in the value chain in one or another way. It doesn't matter if it's pharma, the food and beverage brands, or the automotive industry. We effectively manage changes on the shop floor and reduce downtime. So let's begin with the first feature. It's called Smart Compare. So what is Smart Compare? With Smart Compare, you can detect changes on your shop floor, for instance, in the programs of a PLC. So one of our clients is the big automotive um, OEM, and this client works with 20 external service providers in one shop floor, and they are all only allowed to work on the production floor and make changes to the PLC programs on site. So every day, these service providers go to the production area and deliver their PLC programs on the USB sticks in the afternoon, and then they leave again. Um, and then the customer, the OEM, uses Octoplant and the Smart Compare to accurately track the changes made by the external service providers and then decide for himself which changes he will accept and which changes not. Um, our client uses the supplier checkout to manage and orchestrate these changes. Now let's have a look at the Smart Compare <clears throat> in our live demo. Um, on the left-hand side in the project tree, you see all your OT devices from the shop floor. Imagine it's like a digital twin of your shop floor. All the devices um, from your from your production line are back up, backed up. Um, for instance, an RS Logix 5000 controller. Um, if I click on that one, the uh, change history of that RS Logix 5000 controller. Um, is opened here and you see it contains five versions um, the w questions are directly answered which changes were made how many versions when the change was made um, who did the change who was the last, last person working on the project and uh, why were these changes made so the w questions are directly answered here Let's now click on it, this uh, version 5 and say compare with previous version and the smart compare directly opens. Um, you see version 4 and version 5 next to each other. Um, and you see that an error has been fixed between version 4 and version 5. Next example, let's click on a TIA portal project and do the same thing, compare with previous version. And you see that between version 4 and 5, a logical and getter has been added. The Octoplant Smart Compare works for many OT devices without additional software, like the PLC editor, being needed to be installed. Another example from ePlant. Let's compare it with the previous version again, and you see a contract um, uh, and a signature has been added to uh, the latest version of this document. And here on the left-hand side, you see the difference tree with all the um, differences which were found between the two versions. Um, on page 10, for example, if I open that and click on content different, you'll see that uh, some electric circuits have been um, added to the project. So, yeah, the Smart Compare does not only work, as you have seen, for OT devices yeah, such as PLCs, HMIs, and robots. It also works for documents such as PDFs. So the next example is related to quality management. Here you see control plans, and I selected one. Now I compare this with the previous version. 
and you see a control plan which shows the upper and the lower specification limits of a test process. Um, it is a quality management relevant document that must not be modified without a release process. Octoplant would detect such an unauthorized modification, as you can see here um, between version 2 and version 3. Now let's continue with the second use case, the use case disaster recovery. In this use case, one of our clients, it's a big copper smelting plant, uses Octoplant for backup, versioning, and for disaster recovery. So it uses high temperature furnaces to smelt and recycle copper. Now what happened in the past is that an implosion occurred in uh, one of these uh, furnaces and this caused the liquid copper to leak out. The molten metal set fire to the electrical distribution panel, uh, the cabinet, along with the PLC controllers. So the PLC controllers were damaged afterwards. But fortunately, a backup of the PLC controller code of the programs on the PLCs had been made before with Octoplant. So luckily, the engineers could perform a disaster recovery of the PLC programs using Octoplant. So there are two ways to perform a disaster recovery in Octoplant. The first option is uh, you can do a recovery from a server version. The second option is to do a recovery from an automatic backup. So let's have a look in the demo system, in the live system. If you want to perform a disaster recovery um, via the server version, you go and select the controller. Then you select the version which you want to upload to the PLC. You click on open with editor. The right editor will automatically be selected by Octoplant. Now, of course, you have to start your PLC. I'm using a simulation here of a PLC. Now the program um, is already opened here. And all you need to do is you go to PLC and then you download the code to the PLC. Now this takes a couple of seconds. Now the code has been uploaded to the PLC. You have to confirm that you want to restart the controller and the disaster recovery has already been done. Uh, look how fast this was possible. Um, as I already mentioned, there are two ways for a fast disaster recovery. I will now talk about the second opportunity, the second option you have. There's also a way to perform a recovery from an automatic backup, which Octoplant took itself automatically. Let's have a look into the software, how this would work. So I open again <clears throat> Octoplant, the user client, and now here you see if you click on jobs, a history of the already performed jobs by the software. And now it's really easy. Um, you just remember the um, point when everything in your production facility worked fine. So let's, for example, pick uh, this one here from the list. And now you click on it and say copy back up to directory. You click on next and now Octoplant is restoring this backup and will copy it to the directory. If you now click show target directory and file manager and click on close, the directory will directly open and show you the whole program, the whole PLC code. Now with that PLC code, uh, you can create a new version. You can directly go to the editor. You can uh, directly upload it to the PLC. The whole programs are saved here. Now let's continue with the third use case, the automatic backups and the change tracking. Again, this is a big car manufacturer and uh, he makes 20,000 backups every night uh, at only one location. And why is he doing that? He wants to basically uh, check if there has been any unauthorized uh, modification in the production line. 
Now, the client says that changes in the code of the PLC and the OT devices and the, and the, and the co controllers of the robots are not unusual. Yeah, it's a common thing as long as the production line is under construction. But changes in the production lines are usually finished at a certain point. That means that um, when the construction line is not, when the production line is not anymore under constructions, then changes are an unusual thing. So what the client here does is he receives email, an email every morning, for example, attention, 12 backups have been detected ever since yesterday. And then the client looks closely. Are we talking about a production line which is currently under construction? Then it's okay, then it's not a problem. Or are we talking about a production line without any modification, which is already running? Once, uh, for example, a port was opened on a switch and this change was not intended, but Octoplant could detect it, could detect this change. So let's have a look um, into the software. Here we are in the um, admin client, and here you see the job history, um, and here you see a difference in 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 the in the server version <clears throat> and the backup. So what we want to do is we want to find out what is that difference. So I'm going to click on it and say compare compare server version with backup, and then Octoplant with the smart compare again will tell me what um, the difference between the automatic backup and the server version is. And then I have to decide, okay, is this authorized or is this unauthorized? Now, the last thing I want to show you today is how to connect any device, also those which are not pre-configured in Octoplant. We as OVZ MDT promise that we talk to more automation devices than any other vendor in the world, and we do. So let's assume we want to connect a robot and we have the backup files of the robot, but we don't know which comparator and which device type to select. So what we do is we go to demo.octoplant.com and here in the Octoplant hub, we can then upload this unknown file type. If you go to tools, file detective, you can then select the file for analysis and you select it in my example here from the desktop. And now I will select the file robot.ics. I don't know what it is, the backup of my robot project. I will upload it and now the file detective analyzes the file structure and makes suggestions. It basically tells me, okay, for the file extension, dot project, use the codices comparator for the file extension, dot XML, use the XML comparator um, for the file extension, dot TXT, use the JSON file comparator. Now this we have to configure. Um, for doing so, we have to go to the uh, admin client. In the admin client, we have to select component type editor. And here in the component type editor, you have to click create. Uh, I already created uh, a new file type. This is called new robot. And here I basically just told Octoplan to do exactly what the file detective suge suggested, um, meaning that for a codices um, file, use the comparator codices. For an XML file, use the uh, comparator XML and so on. And as simple as that and as fast as that, you create your own component type and then you can basically also do backups and recovery with Octoplant. So thanks for listening and I hope um, this was interesting. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to come back to me.